Okay, so this is our uh, patron meeting. Again, I do these unannounced. I hope you guys don't mind me just calling you on Skype randomly. It was a little <laughs> surprising. <but> <laughs> yeah, if you guys if basically just ignore the call if, you can, if it's not a good time. I'm just going to pick random times to call. Uh, and if you guys are available, you could just pick up. Are you guys? Are you guys safe? Are you guys okay? Are you guys like? Yeah, I'm uh, very you, safe. Yeah. You're both. You're both in Canada. Yes. Ha, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Wow. I had a, I had a panicked moment this morning because I woke up and um, I didn't realize I had an ear infection, and <gasps> my ear was bleeding. Oh no. So I woke up with like blood all over my pillow. And I said that panic, but. I was able to see, like, we've got that, um, uh, it's like TELUS health thing. I was able to get an appointment, like, straight away. So I've got a prescription and everything. I didn't have to come across anybody. that's has got a clinic. It's like, this oh. is awesome. <laughs> My neighbor picked it up for me. So, yeah, it's all good. Wait, is that a coronavirus situation, like, off service? No, or like, no that's always? That's, that's always been there. But, um, yeah, people are kind of, like, not really fully aware of it. So I've tried to... Uh, like send a bunch of like instructions to people I know just being like this is an option and it's like mm. really quick and fast and if you have someone that can pick up your prescriptions for you then you know, you're golden how are you guys spending your um are you guys in quarantine or like change your oh, life oh okay. how are you do where how are you spending your time oh listening to podcasts and uh, reading and actually the uh Atheist Society of Calgary is having a lot of online uh, meetings. Like last night, we had our oh. first skeptics in the pub online. Nice. We've seen, uh, movie nights on on Netflix, and uh, just almost almost every function we are doing online. Like tomorrow night is book club, and yeah, so actually we're interacting quite a bit. Any? What about you, Jay? I'm I'm still mostly working and I'm actually working out a lot more than usual. <laughs> I'm so bored. <laughs> I installed like because I do a lot of climbing. I installed a hangboard to do all that stuff. Hmm. And uh, yeah, uh, but have you have you tried the any of you guys tried the uh, Netflix parties? Yeah, no. that's what, oh. uh, yeah, they're pretty awesome. They are. Yeah, we I, we've done three or four of them. I, I watched the entire Tiger King through uh, Netflix party with friends. <laughs> is it any yeah. good? Is it is it good? It's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I I'd listen. It was actually a podcast first, so yeah. um, a lot of people didn't seem to know about it. But I had, like recommended it so many times to people, and nobody like listened to me. And now <laughs> it's like they're watching a Netflix. It's like this is the podcast I told you all about, <laughs> and they think I'm lying because they actually took it all down and they're releasing it like episode by episode now. Uh, like okay. no, they just released it. It was like no. How do I how do I know the entire story? I know parts <laughs> of the story that weren't even in Netflix. It was like he faked cancer and all this stuff. It wasn't even in the documentary. Mm. Oh my god! Wow. Oh yeah. I'm I'm reading. I'm doing this. I'm taking this cat. Uh, this uh, great course. You guys know about great courses? Oh yeah, I do those too. Yeah, I'm I'm taking. I'm I'm doing this one on. By the way, if you. If, the great courses, if you do it on Audible, is cheaper than their own website, right? Because if you, if you only get the idea alone, right? So I'm the one that I'm doing right now is be the beginnings of Judaism mm. crash course. It's pretty good. I do it while I'm while I'm running and listen to it. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I'm I'm doing one actually. I've done several, but I'm doing one now on what Darwin didn't know, and it's about evolution. But I already know evolution quite thoroughly, but I'm going to be doing a webinar for our local uh, oh. atheist society on on evolutions. Or yeah, you, you're um, you're uh, you were are or were a scientist, right? Like yes. I forgot, bi biologist. You were micro like well, biochemist more. Oh my my uh, my camera <laughs> just switched on me. Hold on. <laughs> no, I'm more of a biochemist. Biochemist. Okay. Yeah. So you're an expert in this. What do you do? You have anything to tell us about the virus that we don't know? Like that some people are getting wrong, and I, I'm not a virologist. <laughs> no. oh, okay. Wait, biochemist. I I remember that was the hardest course in in UBC. That was the oh, toughest okay. one. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, I love this 
stuff. I taught it for a long time too. You did? Wow, yeah. that's so impressive. Uh, um, any recommendations for books? Right now, I'm reading. Um, what's it? I can't say the name of it. Uh, <laughs> huh. <clears throat> what's wrong with me? Um, oh, don't worry. I always, I, I always forget. I always. It. Um, I always forget. Alpha I always forget. God is the name of it. Which one? Alpha God. Alpha God. Yes. Wow, that and sounds interesting. What is it's that? It's fascinating. It's um, about how the the God of well, the Abrahamic God and a lot of other gods, the way they're depicted in the ancient writings, is basically like an alpha chimpanzee. <laughs> <laughs> Really, the characteristics of these gods are really alpha apes, mm. and and it's it's fascinating. So it's worth checking out. I don't know why my oh I know why my camera keeps switching on me because the USB keeps getting disconnected and connected. That's why. Yeah. But I just have to not touch the USB cord. Um, that sounds fascinating. Do you find it like it's is it evidence based? Do you find it compelling, or do you think it's just like as Oh, uh, it's it's very evidence based. Very. Oh. Uh, the author is Hector Garcia, oh. and he's oh. a clinical psychologist, but he loves evolutionary psychology, and so he studied it a lot. He knows whereof he speaks. Oh. In fact, he so, might be an interesting person to have on your podcast. Oh yeah, that's a good idea actually. On secular judges. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. We need actually some some ideas because we're losing patrons because of all the coronavirus situation. So we're struggling a little bit. So we need to find ways to, um, you know, I mean, it's completely, it's completely understandable though. So we'll figure it out. Well, he's written, he wrote another book more recently and I can't remember the name of it, but it's like, it, it includes politics. Why, you know, why politics works the way it does based on the idea that we're all <laughs> just, apes <laughs> right. and have characteristics of apes anyway hector garcia a good good yeah. interview how do you guys consume do you guys listen to audiobooks yeah yeah what I, book? yeah go ahead no you answer to as well this do you... i don't listen to audiobooks that much because my mind wanders mm. and i'm better if i'm reading Right, right, right. Well, I mean, my mind wonders if I'm not, if I'm just sitting and listening to audiobooks, right? But if you're like running and listening to audiobooks, mm -hmm. it's really hard for your mind to wonder because everything you're occupied doing yeah. something else. Yes, right? Right. <laughs> definitely, and in fact, definitely. in fact, running and listening to audiobooks makes you, because your mind has to focus to on, on the book, you start mm -hmm. you you stop noticing how tired you are, right? So mm. the muscle pain, you don't notice it, uh, and you end up running a lot more. So, <laughs> <laughs> which is good. Well, I'm uh, afraid my running days are over. Well, any exercise, just yeah. walking, walking, walking in the park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A long yeah. walk. Yeah. Jack, what, uh, yeah. any book recommendations from you? Um, I'm mostly just going through the James Rollins right now, so they're kind of. Not anything to do with atheism. Right. <laughs> well, well, not not entirely. Some of them are kind of like there's religious um, like connotations and expectations of people and terrorists, that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, I, that's that's I've go been going through those for now. Um, but I also like um, this author Christopher Bruckmeier. I've been listening to some of his stuff, um, and it's it's all stuff from like I've. I've Went to a um, uh, meet and greet with him before. He's like a, a Scottish writer, and it's kind of like as if like James Bond was happening in like the back streets of Glasgow or something. It's kind of crazy, uh -huh. and it kind of reminds me of home a lot. So yeah, I've been listening to those quite a bit. I'm reading them too. Like I, I've got a uh, an e-reader as well. Like the problem I have with um, audiobooks is like Audible is like one book a month. It's like mm. yeah, that's like. It's less than a. It's like a couple of days, and I'm done. Well, you could buy. <laughs> you could buy more credits. 
Yeah, yeah. It's just that I, I'm trying not to spend money right now. So yeah, yeah. All this, this kind of sucks. So yeah. I'm, I'm reading where I can and then just getting auto, uh, audiobooks when, like, I need something to run to or whatever. Right. Yeah. I haven't read fiction for a very long time. I need to get back to that at some point. I, especially because I want to write fiction one day. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I want to do an alternative um version of islam christianity and judaism in fiction looking at everything <laughs> looking at everything through the devil's eye oh my God. like from 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 his perspective i think oh. that yeah that would be- you watch the tv show lucifer <laughs> Yeah, I didn't like that. It was more of a detective yeah. show. Like I don't like the te- I really wanted to like that show because I'm really I really like the character Lucifer and I I think he's not represented in many in that much, you know, fiction or shows. And I wanted to like the show and I was like I was trying to look past the fact that it was a detective show because I'm so yeah, sick yeah. and tired, but I couldn't. It's just it's more of a detective show than a mythology like lucifer focused show right so and i can't i can't stand detective shows i'm so tired i know yeah i kind of got the same it was like it became like a good background show and then i liked when they did more of the mythology stuff and i'd be like yes. i like to check back in like, yeah oh, i like this and like how he's kind of like he's not he's not really the bad guy he's kind of like yeah, yeah. A, a lot of it was i i really enjoyed that part and just like getting along with angels <laughs> Like, yeah, every time there was a reference to the Bible or some new characters were introduced, like, I was like, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, oh my God, that's amazing. like, but then went, they were going looking for clues and murder. I'm like, nah, like, yeah. I wish they could, yeah, so, um, I, I was so, I'm so desperate for anything like that. I like, you know, Diablo, Diablo, is that the video game? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, like just watch. I well. keep watching the cinematic trailers of that sh- video game because it's about angels and demons and their struggle with each other. I'm like, why are they not shows like this? Like, why are they not like um, Bible theme show? Like the ones that they they make is so lame. Like Noah, it seemed more action than actually mythology. I don't know. I I'm just hoping that. <laughs> They did a little bit of that with um, Supernatural, but then it became like a really, like, they kind of like, it was weird. There was like, after the fifth season, it it started trying to like um, focus more on the the female audience and like Mm. lost a lot of guys, I felt. So, but they did a lot of um, like God and mythology and uh, hell and heaven and all. And it was, that was interesting, but it just became like a, which of the brothers is going to cry this week type show. And it's like, ah, I can't go with this. Like, <laughs> it's like, you, know. you know, and also when I'm actually, I'm now, now that I'm studying the history of Judaism there, you could see that there's so much other stories. There's so many detailed stories. It's not just stuff that didn't make it into the Bible. Uh, there's so many different angels. They have their own like side stories, like unique things that happen. There's, like I'm, re- I was reading about these Jews that lived in Persia, ancient Persia, and there was this, per- there was this, you know, Persian demon that was eat, that was killing every single man that was getting married to this Jewish wife. Like this is a Jewish story about a Persian demon. Like, where are these stories? Like, I, why are these stories? Why don't we know these stories? There's so many interesting like there's so many of them like what like you why is hollywood not on top of this like <laughs> i don't know so, i don't know i think like there's such missed opportunities here like and they all get connected somehow together like okay so now we have persian mythology mixed with abrahamic religions you know it seems like you could do west like an element of west world with this like there are different worlds and they get connected with each other somehow you know, there's so much opportunities here that I think like people are not touching. On. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. All right, I'm gonna start. Yeah, I'm gonna. Start. <laughs> yeah, but first, I, I promise. Uh, years ago, I promised everybody I'm gonna write a book on Islam, um, which I will eventually, and then write a book on Christianity, and then once I get those non-fictions out of the way, 
I'm going to start focusing on my fiction. But to do good fiction, you have to read a lot of fiction, right? And I remember reading a lot of fiction as, as a teenager, but I haven't read, read a lot of fiction for, for years. So I need to get back on, on that. Uh, uh, Luis, do you read fiction? I haven't read fiction in years. I just can't yeah. make myself do it. No? <laughs> I, it just, I, I just can't stay with it. No? <clears throat> I mean, I guess years ago I did. Well, actually, speaking of uh, Judaism, some of the, the, the fiction that I read many years ago was by... Okay, his name was Chaim Potok, and he he was a novelist, and his stories were all about uh, Jewish boys in New York City because that's what how he grew up, mm. and they really they're so poignant, and they really help you understand. I mean, he grew up as a Hasidic Jew, right? And uh, oh, his, his books were amazing. Mm. So I you know I would recommend. Anything by Chaim Potok. <clears throat> but uh, recently I did read a book that was written as a novel, but because I know a little background, I know that it wasn't, that it was based on reality. And that the name of it was The Girl Who Slept With God. Oh, wow. What is and that about? It's, well, the author... Okay was writing about she in in the book she was 14 she's much older now and her dad was a professor at a christian college and it was some of and her mother was even more of a believer and <laughs> that's a long story but the weird part is the author's father was my professor in oh. college and when she would use names of towns and stuff i knew them and i'd been there and when she talks about the father in the book i can see his face they oh. hear his voice because i just adored him when i was in school oh so it was really it was weird <laughs> <laughs> so and, what? Uh, yeah well it took place in in idaho the the college where i went to, to undergrad when I was still in in the fold <laughs> Christian um, it's this it's in Nampa Idaho but she uses another town in Idaho for the name just not say Nampa and uh, I've been there too <laughs> so everything she mentions I've been there <laughs> and it just it was weird but it's an extremely good book what is the story um, like a little well, bit more yeah. her older sister who was about 16 was just oh, a devout christian just always wanted to do missionary work and she convinced her parents to let her go on this missionary tour of teenagers were going to spend what a month in mexico doing missionary work and her big sister came home pregnant and her mother oh. didn't in the house her mother would not let her stay in the house. Oh. And so her father, who <laughs> was a professor at a Christian college, found, and I don't know if he bought or rented, an old house in the middle of nowhere so that she could stay there while she was pregnant. Mm. Younger sister had to go and live there with her to help, help take care of her. And it was all of their adventures. And it was it was just unbelievable, but the most unbelievable thing was it's mostly true. Hmm. Wow. And she said that the author said that people would not believe people who had never been around fundamentalism simply did not believe that could happen. Hmm. Which it did. <laughs> that so would be another. That would be another interesting guest to have. Oh, it really would. Yeah. yeah. Can you send me these names on Facebook? <laughs> sure, I will. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, that's a good. That's a good story. Oh, it's it's yeah. yeah. It was See, weird to me. That's the type of fiction that I like. Like fiction that is. Um, actually, that it's not fiction, is it? <laughs> well, but, it's written as though it were fiction. Right. 
And the reader thinks they're reading fiction. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. But some of us know it isn't fiction. Wait, so she doesn't admit it? So we, if we invite her as a guest, would she admit that it was... Oh, nothing? yeah, she would. Oh, she would. oh okay. Sure. Hmm. No, but, but the type of fiction that I like is the type that is like, you learn something about history or you learn something about mythology. You know, it's not just, it's not just fiction for the sake of... Right, you know, yeah. Yeah. Like the man in the high castle, or like even if it's you learn, yeah, don't learn something. Say that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was just thinking of uh, that. <laughs> uh, yeah, that is <laughs> alternative history might might make you evaluate, like see things from a different perspective. That's very interesting as well, right? What do you, uh, so man? Like I, yeah. I just got into that show because I worked on the fourth season, and I was oh. like, oh, I should really watch. I should really watch this. And then it was like when I found out that there was like a whole kind of like supernaturally type thing to it it was like oh i've kind of lost interest because i thought it was like uh they were hiding they found yeah. a way to hide the you know the, the result yeah and they were trying to like and, and i was like oh so there's like maybe other countries that they're being like kept away from where it's like no you actually won mm. and you're like you're just kind of living in this our propaganda and i was like oh this is awesome i really mm. like this idea and then I was like, no, it's like supernatural. Like, oh, I've kind of lost interest. <laughs> <laughs> so I haven't really gone back to it yet, but I will. Right. Wait, what What did you, you worked on the fourth season? What did the you do? The fourth season, yeah. You... Uh, like a lot of the compositing for um, mm. like all the train stuff. I don't know if you've seen the fourth season. Um, I no, sure. I think it was no. th three seasons. Um, yes, yeah, so, wow. So, I don't know, Liz, if you know, but Jack works on animation stuff for movies and stuff like that. Yeah. All the visual effects stuff. Yeah. Visuals. <laughs> visual effects. Yeah. yeah. Where, where in Canada do you live? Vancouver. Oh, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I, we had them on a show on Atheist Republic. Oh, fabulous. Yeah. Yeah, talk... well done. Yeah. Yeah, to talk about uh, trans-related stuff mm. and how the yes. what? Speaking of being involved in fantasy stuff, uh, do you have you met Paul Enns of Paulagia? I think no. you have. Oh my god! If I have, I, I don't remember. This is going to be well. Bad. Don't <laughs> tell him. He <laughs> he's local. He lives in Calgary. Um, but he's got a YouTube channel that has been really successful where he... Um, oh, yeah, I know, I know. I think I know. Yes, yes. He's on Twitter. I've seen him on Twitter. And I met him. <laughs> I shook his hand. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Yeah. He might be a good interview. He, he has not been deconverted that many years. Mm. Only like four or five, six years. Yeah, I think I think I remember him not liking some of Atheist Republic memes and talking about how bad they oh. are. <laughs> <laughs> He's a good but, guy, really. Yeah. Well, Shannon, Shannon Q is his girlfriend. Yeah. I, I think you've had her one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Shannon is amazing. Um, a lot of people don't know that you know Atheist Republic memes are all over the place. We don't agree with all of them because. It's an atheist republic, not atheist monarchy or yes. dictatorship, right? I sometimes see memes on atheist republic, and I'm like, yeah, no, I don't agree with that. But it represents some atheist views, so we'll post it anyways, right? Yeah. Some of our well, the only thing we all we have very few red lines. Red lines that we have is like no racism, and we or or no sexism and when you say like racism sexism transphobia homophobia we're not talking about the woke definition of those words yeah. we, we, we mean the traditional definition of <laughs> racism homophobia transphobia they're you know outright hatred for gay people or trans people or certain yeah. uh, sex or certain um race you know if you're like if you obviously or against them, then you're like, yeah, you're out. But if you ask a question that my some people might think like, oh, this could this is racist. If you read it in a certain way, no, that's not our definition of racism. Yeah. 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 Oh, there's something else I'm gonna send you. Uh, 
last October, our Atheist Society had what an evening event we called Deconversion Monologues. Mm -hmm. And almost everybody, there were five of us, did a monologue about our own personal deconversion. Ooh. And you you met several of them You know, you, when you were here in yeah. Calgary. And so it might be interesting for you to see that because yeah. you knew the people. You met the people. Oh, yeah. And we felt it was uh, pretty successful. Right. That's nice. So it was just, yeah. Hmm. And it is something that really, for people who don't understand fundamentalism, they learned a lot. Hmm. And for people who were close to fundamentalism, it helped them identify and realize that they weren't alone because other people have been through similar things. So it was a real good evening. Nice. Real good event. I'll send you the the uh, link to that. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I'll check it out. <laughs> you know, I don't know if you guys um, on your phone, are you guys able to download um, YouTube clips? Yeah. Do you guys, do you have that, right? You have that option, right? Yeah, yeah. I always, you know, that's another thing I do on my runs. I get updated on YouTube. I stop listening to podcasts. Because I notice everything I need is on YouTube already, right? Yeah. I just hit the, I just like go over the news that I need to get updated on. I hit download. So Luis, when you said send this to me, I'll just download it. And when I'm running, I'm listening to all of this on YouTube oh. because most of it you don't need the visuals, right? Most of it is just the yeah. audio. Yeah. So I just listen right. to it while I'm running, uh, on double speed. I, yeah, I listen hmm. to my audio. Here's another thing. I don't know if I if I do. So when I listen to my Audible. Or when I listen to YouTube, every I watch everything on double speed. So I'm going, I'm consuming a lot of content that way, right? Um, but I don't know if I could do that with fiction. Would that ruin the fun? I don't know. Do you guys listen to that on, on stuff on double speed? I no. do, but I haven't. Like now, you're saying that I haven't done it with fiction. No. I think yeah, I think fiction. I'm usually usually with fiction. There's kind of like um. You know, if there's something that's kind of more of a uh, historical or something, it's more kind of matter of fact. Whereas if it's fiction, there's kind of afflictions to people's voices and they put on like character type afflictions. And I think, yeah, I think I would I would miss that if it's like a double speed. It just becomes like kind of messy. Mm, yeah. Like if I think about it, like if you think, like, I don't know if you've listened to like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, like no. Stephen Fry doing that. Oh like, yeah, I couldn't imagine ever doing like a double speed Stephen Fry reading fiction. I would just be like, "That is wrong, so yeah. wrong." <laughs> yeah, so mm. I, I would, I would definitely like if it was something like that where he's just so charismatic. Right. Like, yeah, I, I'd, I'd want to listen to that on like single speed. But yeah, I, 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 yeah, that's a good point. Like if I'm listening to debates or something on YouTube, it's like yeah, I'll just go double speed, get more content faster, and mm. I just want to get the details. But yeah, fiction, I would probably say. Like, listen at one, but you could give it a go. Yeah. <laughs> this is why Ali, when Ali talks on Secular Jihadist, I might, but for people that don't know, the Secular Jihadist is a podcast that I do co-host with Ali Rizvi. When he talks, I can't take his, uh, like, for me, it's so slow. <laughs> i like, <laughs> oh, my God, how could people listen to this? And this is <laughs> this may be why some people think I f talk too fast, maybe because I'm used to listening to higher speeds yeah <laughs> another person that i can't imagine listening to on normal speed is sam harris like for me it's okay oh. because i could listen to him on double speed but when i listen to him in like i don't know a lot of people actually i'm like why is this sentence taking so long it, he, like, he talks very slow though right he, yes super uh -huh. slow but i love yeah this is this is why i have this is why I have no friends in real life because I can't. <laughs> like you're talking too slow. Speed up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like sometimes. I, sometimes I'm like, oh, like yes, yes, go on. I don't know. Like where is the double speed button on people? <laughs> you should go to Ireland. Just live in Ireland. They speak way too fast. Yeah. I, and a, a lot of people are saying that. Hey, don't you miss? Like, maybe if you double speed, you're going to miss a lot of information. Now that I'm actually used to double speed, I think I miss information if it's a normal speed. 
Because if it's on normal speed, I doze out and I miss like what the person was saying because it's so boring that I can't pay attention. So for me to actually now be able to consume all the points, it has to be on double speed. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, like um, ADHD maybe. Too slow, too slow, too slow. Yeah. Okay, so I think it's it's been 30 minutes, so I'm going to stop it here. But for everybody that wants to join this conversation, please consider becoming a patron. If, it's fine, if, if, if times are tough, do not become a patron. But if everything is okay, um, link is in the description, become a patron. Uh, and also, if you're, if you can't just be a patron. You have to message me on Patreon. Don't message me, don't email me, don't um, add me on Twitter. Um, message me on Patreon because that's where I actually check everything. Um, make sure to check everything and say like, here's my Skype ID. Um, please add it to the group. And it's, we don't usually announce when we're going to have these meetings. We're just going to call whenever t we have time. And if you can ha answer it uh, on your phone or on your computer, uh, just answer it and join the conversation. So I'm going to try to do more of these. Uh, and feel free not to answer if like it's not it's not going to be a disappointment to any of us if you if it's not a good time right just feel free like no I'm not in the mood today so don't answer or feel free like a answer as many you want okay um, all right so I'm gonna stop recording.